And we're back. Home Track Heroes here on CW11. This segment is brought to you by Nelson Motorsports, and they're located in Snohomish and Wenatchee. They're a family-owned business selling all kinds of motorized vehicles, ATVs, quads, carts, and dirt bikes. Nelson Motorsports for family fun. As we uh, get back with Tom Glitherall, I'm Steve Mortland. We are a little bit halfway through our Interstate Battery Hornet main event. And uh, when we come back, you're going to see a little bit of a change in the lineup. And I don't know if I can quite explain all what happened, but we were uh, talking about Calvin Miller in the number 49, received a black flag for uh, having his window net down. He went into the pits the wrong way, uh, passed the pace car, all three things what you don't do. But, and, you know, not, uh, Calvin just, I'm sure, just got so excited trying to figure all this stuff out. But uh, he's the race leader. Yeah. He's the race leader, That's and the right. window net comes down. That window net is there to keep his arms and appendages inside that race car if that race car should get up on its side or get upside down so that window net is a very very important safety piece but he did that and then of course he passes the pace car because he wants to get in the pits get out of the pits quickly and on the way he goes the wrong direction into the pits which is a no-no and i'm sure that one of the nascar officials down there <laughs> um, very quietly and very succinctly calmly, yep calmly yeah, said, okay, this is how we're going to do it yeah. next time. So Calvin will uh, join the field as we get ready to restart the last half of our Interstate Battery Hornets. 30 laps make up the distance, and we're going to go inside and see how Jamie Corbett does it in the 76. There's another shot of a driver. Well, now he's got both hands on the wheel, but there for a long time, he had just his left hand on it, and there you're back. He's shifting gears. You can, as I talked about earlier, you can see a few gauges you know sitting up very upright in the seat you know there is that sun that comes blaring in and makes it very very difficult to see as you come out of turn four of the three it's over there is a brendan terrio on the inside as they come across the start finish line down into turn number one to climb up on uh the back stretch of our three eights course we'll be seeing those guys coming up in our next for that track in our next main event coming up to round out our night here on CW11 with the Granite Super Sprint Series, but nice group of Interstate Battery Hornets as they come off at of turn four. Finish another lap. We're going to have 10 to go when they come by next time. You're right. It's your leader, uh, Jonah Vick, in that number 70 car. Uh, following is John Newbaum in the second spot, who started back in 14th. It's Ryan Hausenfleck, followed by Jamie Corbett and Brendan Terrio. Steve Hatch in that sixth spot, followed by Trent Gillespie, Dan Miller, Peyton Hopp, and London Smith. Peyton Hopps, another interesting story, too. Youngster, 16 years old, as I understand, and uh, just kind of climbing up a couple positions every time that we have this division on Home Track Heroes, and that's kind of how this whole deal is supposed to work. You just improve a little bit every time, and pretty soon, maybe by the end of the season, I hope, we get to see uh, Peyton Hopp in the top three, if not winning one of these things. That'd be awesome. And, and you know, the Interstate Battery Hornets, like, as we said earlier, a great place to start. And you, if you go look back through the history of Evergreen Speedway, you'll see people who started in that Interstate Battery Hornet mm -hmm. division, worked their way up, maybe went into a street stock or a mini stock, and then maybe jumped into a late model and uh, started tearing it up. One of them, you, you know, you, you can think about a lot of those drivers over the history uh, but they've been very, very successful. Well, we saw it with uh, the, the proof that your theory works. We saw it last week with our very first pro late model race here at Evergreen Speedway. The young man, Dario Redditch, picked up the win, and that's exactly how he did it. He started off in a youth hornet, moved up to a hornet, moved up to a uh, street stock, and then now is a pro late model and a winner in the pro late model division. So I'm excited to see how he does next week as we've got eight laps to go here for our Interstate Battery Hornets, and, and it's kind of cool to see how that whole progression works, and it, it works well. And the graphics on the screen show the driver as Tanner Emery. Uh, as we said, there was a last-minute driver change, and then Jonah Vick jumped in the seat. That guy knows his way around Evergreen Speedway, <laughs> yes, especially in a mini stock over the years and stuff like that, having a great run, followed by John Newbaum and Jamie Corbett. Looks like we have got a caution out right now is kind of check it out at the start finish time. We saw a car in there, and the number 27 is spun down on the inside there. That's and Tiffany Yangbaum. That it is Tiffany Yangbaum, so let's hope she can get that thing started back up and get back underway. Well, Tiffany was just, uh, you know, checking the windshield to make sure it was nice and clean and stuff. <laughs> so she pulled over, and no, just teasing. She's done a great job out there today, so... Um, probably a little bit of a mechanical issue right there came up, and so we get that thing fixed. You get it fired back up. Hopefully, 
and can rejoin the field. You know, this kind of gives us a second to uh, thank a bunch of people that without their help and without their tireless efforts, we couldn't do what we do here on uh, Saturdays out at Evergreen Speedway or Sundays uh, when we're bringing you the home track heroes. But all the people, the Cascade push trucks, which you don't see, you will see a lot of them coming up with the Granite uh, Super Sprints as that's how they get started is having a push truck get them uh, going and fired up. But our EMTs, our track cleanup crews, the people in the pits, Amy Draper, who's been walking up and down those pits forever, telling people to get lined up. And, and the cool part about a, a, a lady like Amy is that they know who the boss is. <laughs> and when she <laughs> says move, you move. And there's just going to be no arguing with it. All the people that helped put this together. And thanks so much to CW11. I know we say this every week, but this is so kind of revolutionary what what this whole deal and it's so cool to be a part of it as we see Jonah Vick in the number 70 getting lit back up with 13 of John Newbaum on the outside Jonah really hung tough there going into turn number one and that will put that number 10 or 70 car out in front look at the uh, 13 of Newbaum taking a peek down on the inside there let's see if we can get it to stick as, uh, oh, yeah, let's little, just slide up a little bit, and yeah, I'll use your door to stop me. Eight tires are better than four. If you ever need a description, that's kind of how it works right there, folks. <laughs> but, boy, i got to give props to Jonah for hanging tough in there, and uh, got to give props to John Newbaum for giving it a try. Jamie Corbett's taking a sneak down on the inside as he and Newbaum having a great side-by-side -side battle. That outcome will go to Jamie Corbett in the 76 and just like I told you guys when this first started oh look at that smoke coming out of the 76 of Corbett is that who's putting that out there uh -huh. boy it sure looks like it so, so let's jump on and take advantage of so I may have ruined down. another race car tonight yeah, and right. that might be the 76 of Corbett just because I tried to praise him and then it just but he's going to hang tough in there the car's still fast boy he really went around the outside of Newbomb but that just doesn't look good. Newbaum giving him a little tag there in the left rear, but Corbett holding steady. You know, in this Hornet division, we've talked a lot about it tonight, but the junior Hornet division, yes. a great it's place. Fun. If you have, a, you know, a younger child, up to you can be up to 14 years of age. I think a, there's a birthday deal in there that you can be almost 15. But, I mean, if you've got somebody that's 12, 13, 14 years old and wants to drive a race car, this is the place to be. I'm going to guess that the black flag's going to be coming out here in a minute. Boy, you can see a little bit of flame from underneath there, too. There's something pretty serious going on with the 76 of Jamie Corbett as he pulls up high. It might behoove him to put that thing right in that big old dirt field back there and put that out. But I just saw just a tick of flame coming out here as we're going to have two laps to go, and it is going to be Jonah Vick behind the wheel of the Tanner Emery number 70 car. We have a change in the second spot. Uh, Jamie Corbett slid into that spot, and then now Newbaum back into it again. Yeah, Jamie. Brendan Terrio is moving up into that third spot. Ryan House and Pluck in fourth, and uh, Steve Hatch make up the top five. His white flag should be coming out next time by for Jonah Vick. As you see the number 70 car taking it right there. One more to go for our main event for our Interstate Battery Hornets. Let's see how this battle shapes up. Newbaum in front of Terrio. Newbaum taking the hard left-hander as they go up into the top of the 3 8 course. Out of turn number two, down the back stretch they go. They can really leg it out on this part of the course. But up front and way up front, it is all Jonah Vick as he comes across the start-finish line. Picks up the win tonight in the Interstate Battery Hornets as John Newbaum hangs in there tough for the second spot. Whoa. Oh, hang got on. Got a little bit of uh, action right there as they came to the stride. <laughs> that was the 221 of Lyndon Smith and the 025 car getting into it. And Frank Gillespie. Here's a replay. Look at that. Oh, boy, what a gnarly hit. One of those cars, I believe it's the uh, Trent Gillespie, the 025, has got an in-car camera. Let's see how that... Uh, how that is going to surface out. This looks, oh, oh man. Boy, those guys this are was all over oh, the place. You hooked me, I'm going to hook you. Yeah, and hook he did. All right, let's bring him up front. For the trophy presentation, for that, let's go to Derek. Third place, Brendan Terrio. So you and Jamie were battling it for lap after lap after lap, just trading paint. Walk me through that. 
Well, that's my partner, and I always race my partners as hard as I can. I know that he's a good driver. I know that he'll take it. I know he very rarely makes mistakes. I will always race him hard, as hard as I can, because he's fast. And so I just we're we're neck and neck for the points lead. We're we're right there. I mean, I, I'm 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 crushed for him. The fact that he had mechanical failure. Uh, I feel super bad for him. I mean, he always drives well. That's why I'm able to race him so hard. All right, so I was out here for the uh, the drift event. Oh yeah. And your brother drives. R7. And, and, oh, and, R7. and he was crazy in all of his interviews. So where do you guys get the energy for these interviews? It just runs in our blood, man. We've been, we grew up racing. Everything was gas engines. It didn't matter whether it was a weed eater or a lawnmower. If it was gas power, we loved it. We wanted it. We worked on it. It was our life. It still is our life. It runs in our blood. So um, that's my little brother. He'll be back out here tomorrow. He's running for a Pro, one li or a pro 2 license. He's uh, tied for fourth right now. Um, we're going to give it all we have. Please, please come out and watch the drifting. It's, it's, if you don't know what's happening in your guys' own backyard, the baddest cars in the world come through this track right here, so come check it out. All right, is there anybody you want to thank? Yeah, I want to thank my sponsors, Happy Cookies and Cakes. Look them up on Facebook if you ever get a chance. Uh, all my family at Raritan Racing, my little brother Garrett, my wife Michelle, um, David Harrison, Jameson Construction Services, um, all the people that come together to make me be able to be out here. It, it's a team effort. I could never do it all alone or without even one of them. So big thank you to them, all of them. All right. Brendan Terrio, always excited in yeah. third place. I like trophies. <laughs> right, we're here second place, John Newbaum. So first race of the year, super wet, super rainy. You, you made your way through it. Different racetrack today. How do you feel? I loved it. I love the rain. I love the sunshine. It's a good time to come out and enjoy the sun and have a good time racing. So what's what's main, the main differences when you're racing rain versus sun uh, in the Hornets? There's not really a big difference in me. I like the rain just because it's a little bit better to, I, don't know, I like to push the limits a little bit better. All right. Anybody you want to thank? I would like to thank the man uh, gas station in Gold Bar, Rico's Pizza in Gold Bar, a Richter Farm in Puyallup, and all the people that helped. All right, John Newbaum, second place. So we have Jonovic, not Tanner Emery. Uh, got a last minute call. Tanner yep. has to work. Yep. So wa walk me through that uh, phone call. You know, I've been good friends with Tanner for a, a long time, uh, basically since we were in middle school. and. Uh, I kind of helped him get into racing. We built the cage in his first car, and uh, he's just been probably one of my best friends for a long time. And then uh, he he's got he works at Honda of Marysville, and he's uh, got called into work at the last minute, couldn't make it, and he's trying to run for points this year. So uh, he's put me in the car, and uh, so I got to give him a big thank you for giving me the opportunity to drive this thing. So it's pretty nice to be able to call in a a, a former mini stock champion for your uh, for your guest driver uh, so that was kind of a crazy race there was a lot going on yeah. there so like j just I mean we had a car fire we had multiple spin outs we had a hood fly up yeah. like wh what are you thinking with all those restarts uh, I just know that I got to make that shift perfect you when you start in these Hornet cars you, you start in second you got to grab third coming off of the bank um, and I knew if I messed up that shift it was going to be all over so uh, you just really have to focus on what you're doing and making sure that uh, the guy next to you is right where you want him to be uh, if you're starting on the pole because you're you're the one setting the pace when you're on the pole so you just got to make sure that that you're in control of what's going on uh, and it, it worked out pretty good that time all right Jonah Vic driving for Tanner Emery